actually going to uh, work out pretty well. If I sit behind you, it looks like a giant. Oh shoot, it's going live too. Already? Yeah. Well, that's right, this one actually goes. All right, good morning guys. Michael Batiste from the Elk Calling Academy here at the Western Hunt Expo in Salt Lake for day one. And of course, this man needs no introduction. I'm sitting down with Jason Phelps this morning. Don't, don't give me that much credit. <laughs> you ready for day one? I am. I'm a, I hate the setup, but I, I like day one. And I like day one through four, and I don't like the teardown. So everything in the middle. You know, the shows. unfortunately, this industry, we have those gives and takes. We have those goods and the bads. Yeah. So, and in fact, goods and the bads. So let, let's kind of talk about that. How have you seen kind of you know, elk hunting evolved over the last few years in a positive manner. So I, I love the popularity. Um, you know, when I started, I started this about 10 years ago, been following, the, you know, elk hunting, um, you know, as far as a, an industry. So there's there's the before where I didn't even know this whole world existed. We just hunted to fill the freezer. And then I, I got to move in. And even in that short time that I've been in, I've seen it change, um, you know, the popularity. Well, uh, even when we started, yeah, our elk calls have got more popular, but um, we used to sell calls during two months of the year, right? July and August. Now people are on fire, excited year round. I, we're selling elk calls from January 1st to December 31st and everywhere in between at a pretty steady rate. We still get the big spike July and August. So I think the, the, the fire's there. Um, you know, some of the, the video series that have been going around, I, I don't know if that's the whole uh, impact or if it's just social media, but I get a lot of calls now from guys out east, like their once in a lifetime dream hunt. They're just doing it. They, they made the decision. You know, what calls do I need? But I know ultimately that that's there. So I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, hype built around it right now. Guys just getting out and doing it because there's some, you know, over-the-counter opportunities. I just think it's on elk hunting, um, you know, with the, and, and elk calling is just kind of, uh, you know, elevated right now. You know, and we've also heard that the baby boomers, you know, they're starting to retire from hunting. Our numbers are starting to drop. Uh, you know, so there's a big push for putting or getting new people introduced. But you know, I read an article the other day that was really interesting that more and more millennials are starting to hunt because they're starting to find out the reward of you know going out and harvesting their own meat yep. and knowing exactly where it comes from and, and having that control of what goes on yep. the table. But on the flip side of that too, so you know, we, we know there's certainly been positive. So anytime there's a positive, there's that equal yep. and reactive yeah, yeah. opposite. So what have you seen kind of kind of negative light with with all this growth um you know the, you know kind of to, to spur back to what you were talking about um you know the millennials the there's there's a divide in the hunting industry in, in my eyes um you have the the traditional rednecks which i i would consider myself my family has hunted for generation generation we put our our uh, you know we used to hunt in red flannel we used to go out and hunt and then you have this new millennial crowd and i think um, at least from a standpoint, there's some there's some butting heads. I think of you know the the way we used to do it versus the new way. Um, just the, in my opinion, the the biggest negative right now is just the 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 none of the user groups. I mean, you can call yourself a do it yourself. We have all these little yeah. keywords: do it yourself or guided. Yes. Yes. You have archery, rifle, muzzleloader, crossbow. Throw crossbow in with the archery guys. You have all this division. Oh. So you try to like. By time you call them yourself as a traditional, do-it-yourself, over-the-counter, public land, <laughs> bow hunter, you've now like defined yourself as, as a tiny user group. Well, some, for some reason, these user groups can all figure out how to argue amongst each other Absolutely. in some form or fashion. And uh, you know, it sounds really cliche, but one of the reasons and one of the things I, I take some pride in is, is being a voice or an advocate for all hunters. Like, yes. Yeah, I, we're always going to... We're always going to end up arguing about who should get a longer season, who should get the prime seasons. But overall, I think we should figure out how to make sure that my kids and your kids and your grandkids can, can continue instead of fighting and tearing each other down. So that's that's the one big negative. And maybe it's been around forever. It just seems to have come to a head. Anytime I talk to you know the Fish and Wildlife Commissioners, um, it's like, we have a tough job, and I agree with them. How do you satisfy you know, this user group seasons or tag quotas and this one, and it's, you know, the opportunity and they're trying to have to provide all of that. Um, so I think, in my opinion, the division and the segregation of, of user groups is, is a tough thing to handle right now. There's no more of that, that unified front that we're all on the same page, we're all on the same team. And, and you know, the, the one thing that I've really seen with as is elk hunting and especially archery elk hunting becomes more and more popular you know, I got into archery to get close, to yeah. see how close I could get to the animal. 
but it seems like there's a new group out there that 80, 85, 90 yard shots are an everyday thing. But I'm also noticing that these are groups that maybe don't have that much experience. They can certainly, you know, well, I can hit a paper plate at 90 yards with every arrow all day long. Well, that's great, but let's throw in adrenaline, sweaty palms, weather, yeah. an animal. They can move at any time. What's, what's, what's your take on those from an ethics standpoint? I mean, I mean, I, I know kind of so putting you on the spot. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to answer it the, the safe way, the safe way. <laughs> and then I'll give you my true opinion, I guess. Okay. I'll never, as long as it's legal, right. I'm okay. It's, it's acceptable. Right. But now acceptable, it, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe dissect acceptable. Um, yeah, a lot of us, you know, pound the 3D ranges, we go to the mountain challenges, we do all that and we're pretty confident shots. My opinion, you know, being a being an elk caller, I want to get that thing as close as possible. I'm more proud of the bulls, regardless of size, that I've shot under 10 yards mm -hmm. versus the bulls I've shot at 30 or 40, 50 or 60. I'm, you know, I've still never... Uh, you know, I put a follow-up shot in a bull out to, you know, 75. That's a different story. But, but that's a different you know, story. You know, initial yeah. shots, I think my longest shot ever has been right about 45. Yeah. Um, and that, that's getting comfortable. I'm fairly, so for me, and, and this is where I think we all have to really peel back and take a look at ourselves, is it's for you. What right. are you, everybody's different. There are some, you know, guys that can shoot, but then you also have to figure out, yeah, you can shoot. I don't, you can hit a three-inch circle at 100 yards every time. And maybe you could do that out in the woods with your adrenaline going because maybe you got ice flowing through your mm -hmm. veins. But can you do that and guarantee that elk's not going to take a step? Can you do that and guarantee that the wind's not, you know, that you've read the wind perfectly all the way there? Because a 100-yard shot, you're going to, you know, you're going to have some, um, you know, environmental issues, you know, mm -hmm. or, or, and, and stuff that, that's going to affect your shot. And so that's where I think, you know, by keeping it at 45, I kind of eliminate any any uh, you know, chances any of... Any variable that you yeah, can't control. Yeah, I have a lot more control yes. over that. Yes. Yeah, that elk still may take a step. That elk still may jump the string. But I, I think at that point, I've limited, you know, the possibility of that happening or or limited the, the uh, you know, the... To, to what extent yeah. that, that they can jump or they can dodge or they can move. Um, my arrow's going to get there a lot faster. And so for me... Uh, I think I have just as much fun calling those things in close. Uh, you know, 45 is about my max. There are, and then you you throw in the stuff like the frontal shot. What you better be pretty confident, <laughs> you know, confident that you can hit that. That yeah. you know, there is a uh, a four by 16 type slot that works there, but I really want to hit it in that you know four by yeah. six type shot. And so for me. That's typically going to be 25 and under, and, and I'm going to want that bull to be still. Um, you know, if he's 10 and under, I could start to you know shoot when he's not completely stopped. But um, you know, all that stuff goes through your head, and then your ability to like figure out where all the vitals are at different angles and, mm -hmm. and where the bone structure is. You know, all that stuff you need to be able to do that. Yeah, we can shoot foam and hit a ring all day, but there, when you're shooting at a real animal and need to kill the thing, you need to put a lot more uh, thought into where you're hitting it and what that arrow is going to do once it gets there. Andy, good morning. Thanks for popping on. So, yeah, no, I, I'm with the same way. And I've, I've taken the frontal shot, you know, a few times with great success. And, yeah, you hear, hear everybody, well, well, it's a volleyball size opening. Me, I'm old school, aim small, miss small. Yeah. I don't want to hit a volleyball. I want to hit a tennis ball or a <laughs> golf ball. But, yeah, I'm like you. With me, it has to be 25 yards or less, level or slightly downhill, no brush, and that animal has to be perfectly yep. relaxed. If all those don't check off... Yeah, I, yeah, I'm not going to take the shot yeah, because I, of, you know, we have that ethical responsibility of that, of putting that animal down quickly, humanely, yeah. and, and plus, I mean, you elk hunt long enough, you're going to be on a blood trail yeah. that is going to take you over miles of yeah. terrain. Yeah, the hands and knees type. The, look, the yeah. gut check, the questioning in your head, the, the doubting, I mean, all that. So, you know, really controlling that. And plus... I, I mean, I, I love it when you're sitting there working and you get those cows and calves that come, you know, running in before the bulls in the group. And I've had calves a few times stop right next to me and just sit there and try to nibble the leaves on my yeah. shirt. And, you know, you're kind of giggling, trying to hold your composure from blowing them out. And, yeah, right right with you on that. So, all right, I, I know it's it's day one. You guys still have a little bit to uh, get going. So, one last thing. Okay. The new... Amp, Angry Mountain Production Series. Let's let, let's yeah, touch the, on that real quick. The tradition series. So, we, me and Nick Schmidt were uh, invited to be part of the Land of the Free One, which was the successful series from Born and Raised Outdoors. 
and we got to see the positive side of hunting. Um, you know, the reactions. There was really nobody, um, you know, putting it down. It brought the hunting industry up. Um, you know, it brought a lot of excitement. <clears throat> and we had always kind of dabbled in the. We were the group that never produced anything. We right. always kind of called ourselves a group. We hung out there. And we're like, let's just do it, guys. We. We knew, and everybody knows our strengths. Like, I'm not the funniest guy, and Charlie's gonna be, you know, we knew, we knew what every strength was, and we had some good hunts, and like, let's just go film it and see what we got. Do we have enough to do a series? And so we did it, we, we, but we didn't stop at just archery elk. We went and did some muzzleloader elk hunting. We went and did some rifle mill deer hunting, um, kind of some of the stuff we grew up doing. Um, I think we're on episode 23 or 24 now. We're getting into the mule deer hunting, uh, but it's been a pretty huge success, um, you know, from our standards. The first year, kind of didn't really even have a YouTube page, so we launched it. Um, it it's pretty good. I, I recommend people go check it out. If nothing else, you're gonna laugh at John and Charlie. Um, we'll see a few elk die, see a few deer die. Um, but John, John and Charlie hunting the Shire of Idaho. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. still that still cracks me. Up. <laughs> oh, there he was, a goofballs. But uh, no, I hope what you can see that is how much fun, um, you know. We all kind of came from a tradition where we hunted with our families. There were, right. really was never a question on why or when we were going to hunt, is we were going to do it as soon as we were old enough to do it. Um, got into that. Uh, but then our traditions kind of changed. We wanted something else out of hunting. I didn't want to drive around clear cut to clear cut. I wanted to be able to go hike in five miles. Um, so I found this group of guys, or we kind of all found each other, and we all hunt the same way. So this is kind of our, our new tradition. Right. Um, and so that's kind of what we're trying to explain to this. Well, Andy, who's who's watching, says, uh, you know, when you talked about the ethics standpoint, he says he couldn't agree with you more. So it's nice nice to see that people yeah. are out there that have that same belief. And then he says he's, that he's really enjoying the uh, tradition series. Good. So, so Good. you know, hey, like I said, day one, it's always kind of hectic. Always appreciate you sitting down chit-chatting with us. So for you guys, go follow uh, Angry Mountain Productions on YouTube. Check out their video series. And, uh, you know, this is just video one of day one here at the Western Hunt Expo. Stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in. As always, keep calling, keep practicing. Most importantly, though, have fun, guys. We'll see you guys on the next video. Jason, appreciate it. Thanks for having me. You bet. I didn't know if I had a bloody nose or if I, I needed to sneeze the whole